This is a patient with a history of lung cancer who comes in for restaging, and so we're going to go down to the abdomen and pelvis. And as you scroll down, there's a couple of abnormalities that uh, we notice. Um, and I specifically want to sort of guide you to the peritoneal cavity uh, and some of the retroperitoneal spaces. And so if you look in the left upper quadrant, there are these two nodules here in the left upper quadrant. But there's also similar appearing nodules on the right side over here. Uh, one smaller one there, one bigger one there. As you look here, adjacent to the bowel loops, there's another roundish appearing solid uh, nodule. Um, and as we scroll more inferiorly, there's going to be a bunch of other nodules. One here, one of the subcutaneous fat, um, and perhaps also even more inferiorly down in the pelvis with a bunch of nodules there. And so what do we make of these? And so certainly when we see uh, nodules like this and the context of a known neoplasm, carcinomatosis becomes something you worry about. It's possible some of these represent lymph nodes, particularly those down in the pelvis. But we also notice that the patient is status post-splenectomy. Whenever I see a patient is status post-splenectomy, and then after that I see some peritoneal nodules, really anywhere in the abdomen and pelvis, I start to think about could this be splenosis, ectopic splenic tissue, certainly the left upper quadrant. We can see that tissue not uncommonly, even a little bit away from the left upper quadrant. Uh, it's not an uncommon location, but it turns out that it can occur in almost all locations in the abdomen and pelvis, and it can occur on the right side as well. We can see these two nodules. It can occur more inferiorly in the omentum over there. Some of the stuff has sort of gotten out into the subcutaneous tissue over there. It's possible some of the stuff in the pelvis could be splenosis, though those, as I said, could also represent a few small lymph nodes. But this actually demonstrated uh, quite long-term stability, and so all the findings were uh, compatible with splenosis. You can confirm that with some nuclear medicine studies, liver spleen scans, heat damage tag, red blood cell scans. You can also actually get an MRI, and if you get the MRI and it demonstrates findings that you'd expect a normal spleen to show on T2 weighted images and post-contrast sequences, we can see reasonably confidently that it represents splenosis.